I'm here to talk about the uh, the Ampeg V4, which is an old uh, Ampeg amp that was made in uh, the early 70s through I think about the early 80s. But I'm pretty sure this is the uh, um, earliest model of it, and it's got a 4x12 cabinet that comes with it, and uh, I think the amp was said to have like a uh, hundred watts all tube power but I think it's from what I've read it's more like 125 watts or something uh, this setup was originally used for a uh, guitar but I don't know I, I like it for bass and there's another version of this called the V4B which is exactly the same thing except instead of uh, having a switch to boost the treble it's got a switch to um, boost the lows uh, and I don't, I'm not really interested in that because I'm more of a uh, highs and mids kind of bass player but um, if you look at the uh, uh, inputs over here there are two of them and you can set the volume for uh, each one so obviously that one over there would be for that input and you can select the uh, gain like uh, I just got done playing this with a P bass which is passive so I just put it on zero decibels but I have an active Ibanez too and I put that at negative nine decibels because I, I guess it has to do with um, how much gain the instrument gets or whatever and um, you know I don't want to give it more gain than necessary you know and uh, over here normally I would probably have the treble cranked up to about like here so probably about three o'clock but because of the way this amp is I really don't need to put it any higher than this and it's got plenty of treble um, this switch here is called the uh, ultra high and if you put it lower it's got more of a just a fat sort of bassy tone but if you crank it up a little bit you've got a rock sort of high-end slap tone that I tend to use for the most part and over here you got the mids I crank the mids to the max and uh, set it over to the right it just seems like this switch gives you like different frequencies of mids and it just so happens that this one is the one I like for the most part um, now the beauty of this though is that if I want to go from having a high-end sort of bass sound with more mids you know to to a sound that's just uh, low and fat all I have to do is you know put the thing in standby first and then crank these things over to the left and I get a more of a boom 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 sound rather than a bow bow sound if you know what I mean and over here is the bass I've got that cranked to about uh, I don't know maybe two o'clock one o'clock something like that and the reverb is uh, well, it, it just causes a bunch of weird static and distortion, so I have it completely disabled. It's, you know, to, to even get it to the point where you can even notice something, you have to turn it to about here anyway. And I guess it has something to do with the reverb tank, but I don't know. I don't really care. I just use reverb through my pedal, so. Um, and here are the different uh, buttons here to activate a tube amp. You turn it on, and then you wait for it to... Uh, heat up the tubes a little bit to get everything okay and then eventually you flip the switch here when it's powered up and then you can uh, just uh, start jamming I guess and this is supposed to be um, like if you're getting hum somewhere I guess you're supposed to like flip the switch and it's supposed to affect the polarity or something <laughs> it's supposed to mess with the hum so you don't get as much buzz or something but I I've found that it hasn't made a whole lot of world of difference either way but uh, maybe that's just me <clears throat> oh by the way and I won't be able to play this here because I live in an apartment and I don't want to get evicted but um, if you set the volume to about here or here starting at about there you get a ridiculous amount of overdrive which is distinctive of tube amplifiers 
because uh, in a normal solid state amp you have gradual changes in volume and effort to keep the amp from distorting and clipping because it, it, a solid state amp when it distorts and gets overdriven it sounds kind of well crappy and with the tube amp I don't know it just to me it, it sounds pretty good but some pe most bass players would probably want a solid state amp because they want to have more of a um, a clean tone all around but I like having more of a brutal in your face tone for bass and I have a fan that I run back here constantly because while you're playing you need to you need to keep your tubes cool so that they don't overheat and I read somewhere that if you have a fan in the back of your amp it, include, it uh, increases the life of it pretty well and I got the penis uh, set to set to um, eight ohms because that's what the uh, cab is at. If I had another cab, I'd set it to four ohms, and that's uh, basically it. Um, this thing is this thing is unbelievably heavy compared to other amps out there, and carrying the cab is even more of a pain. I'm gonna uh, play this thing with some different settings so uh, you know what it sounds like because the whole reason I made this video is because there's not really um, a video on YouTube that shows the V4. I think there is but the guy basically just shows all the buttons and shows that everything is where it should be and I think he was just trying to prepare it to be sold but I don't think there's I think there might be one video of somebody playing a, uh, a a V4 but I think it's plugged into a 4x10 cabinet and not a 4x12 or whatever so well in any case I thought I would just make more of a comprehensive video about what this amp is about because I, I love the amp and there's not really any uh, information that's on it on like YouTube I think there's just one video of somebody playing it or something so um okay